Hello, welcome back to Algebra 1 with Miss Betsy. Today we're starting our section, our new chapter, Chapter 5, and we're going to be talking about how we solve inequalities. We've spent a lot of time solving equations where we used our example of a seesaw, and we kept that seesaw in balance. What we have with inequalities is two, expre or two quantities that are not equal. There's a relationship between them, but they are not equal. So one's going to be greater than the other. One's going to be less than the other. This is a little bit of a different twist, but I think a lot of what we're going to be doing in this, in this first section you're already familiar with. So, this of course is the text that I'm still teaching from. This is Algebra 1 for Christian Schools, published by Bob Jones University Press, second edition. Again, the sequencing is different in the third edition, but you can still learn from this material. So let's go ahead and pray and get started. God, you are awesome, and I thank you that you have given to us, given to man, the ability to think and to reason and to learn something of the world that you created about us. Help us to apply ourselves diligently to our studies and to keep our eyes focused on you. Pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. So, this is equals. This is not equals. There are five symbols that we are going to be talking about today. We have greater than. We have less than. We have not equal to. We have less than or equal to, and we have greater than or equal to. And how would we use these? This right here, 8 is greater than 5. 5 is less than 8, 5 is not equal to 8, 5 is less than or equal to 8, 8 is greater than or equal to 5. These are true expressions here. The point of this mouth here points to the smaller number. It's always going to be pointing to the smaller number. 8 is greater than 5. 5 is less than 8. 5 is not equal to 8. Now here, 5 is less than or equal to 8. Less than or equal. When you have a disjunction or an or, that means only one of those conditions have to be true. Is 5 equal to 8? No, it's not equal to 8, but 5 most certainly is less than 8. 8 is greater than or equal to 5. 8 is not equal to 5 but it is greater than 5. So these expressions here could be, another example might be if we had x greater than 5, x less than 8, x not equal to 2, x less than or equal to 8, x greater than or equal to 5. These expressions over here with the variable sort of look like equations to us, but they're not equations because equations have to equal one another. These are called inequalities because we're having a statements here that are not equal. Now, this should be very familiar material to you. I'm not going to spend much time at all on this video because you've got word problems that you're working on for this week and you're getting ready to take a test. But here's the introduction to inequalities. If we want to graph them, they ask us to graph x is greater than or equal to negative 3. So if we have a marker that is dying, if we have this number line here where I have negative 3 0 and 3, and we want to graph x greater than or equal to negative 3. How are you going to graph x is equal to 3, negative 3? x is equal 
to negative 3. Well, now let's think of some numbers. What about number 4? Negative 4. Is negative 4 greater than negative 3? No. Or negative 2? I mean, negative 10? No. Negative 100 greater than a negative 3? No. Nothing to the left-hand side, nothing less than negative 3 can be greater than negative 3, can it? But what about 0? Is 0 greater than negative 3? Mm-hmm. Is 3 greater than negative 3? Yeah. What about 4? What about 1? What about 2? What about 0, 0, 0, 0, 0? Yeah. What about negative 2? Is negative 2 greater? Yeah. What do you see happening? You see that you could fill and put all of these dots here. Everything to the right of negative 3 on the number line is a part of your solution. So what you do when you graph inequalities on the number line, the arrow shades to the right if you can, if you're talking about greater than. This here says that whatever value we have has to be either greater than or equal to. This solid dot means that it's equal to. Greater than or equal to a negative 3. But what if it had been x is greater than only a negative 3? Here's negative 3. Is negative 3 part of our solution? When we say x has to be greater than negative 3, no, it cannot equal negative 3, so we're going to circle negative 3. When we have an open circle, that tells us that that is not a part of the solution, but everything else to the right of this on the number line is part of the solution. Okay? What about less than a number? If we wanted to say x was less then 8. Here's a quick sketch. I have 0, I have 8, I have negative 8. Is 9 less than 8? No. Is 8 less than 8? No. 8 is equal to 8, so you cannot have 8 be a part of your solution. You're going to use an open circle to indicate that that 8 is not a part of the solution. And you're going to shade everything to the left because 0 is less than 8, 1 is less than 8, negative 17 is less than 8, negative 2145 and a half is less than 8. So we have an open circle, solid line going to the left, indicating x is less than 8. What about x is not equal to 2? Zero, let's just do a negative two and a two. If something on a number line cannot be equal to a number, we have an open circle. Two cannot be a part of the solution because it says x can't be equal to two. But it doesn't say x may not be equal to anything else. So the entire rest of the number line is a part of the solution. So you are going to have to graph or shade in every bit of that number line except the number 2 itself. Now, x less than or equal to 8, that's when we have our solid circle because the fact that it, the number can be equal to 8, the value of the variable can be equal to 8, allows us to include that 8 as part of your solution. x is less than or equal to 8. Shades everything to the left of 8 and including 8 on the number line. And if we want to do x is greater than or equal to 5, we are going to include negative 5, 0, 5. It says it can be equal to 5, so we're going to shade in the 5 and everything else to the right of 5 on the number line. So that's what they're going to be asking you to do in section 5.1.
5.1. If you have problems, send me a text or ask me a question in class on Friday, and I will see you next time.